Hello again, it's Jess or Jashi Karin, and welcome back from my video on how to make Dutch door layouts. Dutch doors are something that I've quite enjoyed using in my journal, and they can be a really versatile tool in your journal as well. Originally this was going to be just one video, but given that I actually have more to say about Dutch doors than I initially thought, I've split this video into two. So for this first one, I'll be showing you guys some of the Dutch door layouts that I've used previously in my journals, and then I'll go into detail with how to make each of the three different types of Dutch doors. In the other video, a link to which is in the cards above, I'll show you guys five different examples of ways that you could use a Dutch door. If you already know how to make a Dutch door and weren't overly fussed in seeing the Dutch doors I've made previously, jump over to that one instead. Otherwise, before we get started, just a reminder that all of the equipment I use in today's video will be linked in the description box below. So the first Dutch door style layout that I used was in February of 2017, and it was one of these folded vertical Dutch door styles. I set this up for my weekly layout, so I had my events list here, and then my tasks on this folded Dutch door. Whereas on the other side, I had a weekly to-do list, and then some just general notes about things that were coming up, and whether or not I'd done my chores. The next Dutch door layout that I used in this journal was one of these horizontal style ones. So this involves actually cutting the pages of your journal so that you can have a cutout from the top and then this door that swings back and forth. In my next journal, I also used the folded Dutch door to make this bullet journal spread ideas page. Instead of just having one that you can fold and unfold, I decided to stick this one together. So this ends up being half the size of a regular page. In my third journal, I again had that horizontal Dutch door weekly. However, for this one at the top of the page, I had a list of important events that I had going on each day. This meant that regardless of which task list I was looking at, I could always see the important events. On a different weekly, I again used that folded vertical Dutch door style so that I could have an events and meals list. The rest of the spread was just to house some running checklists. I used this folded style again in June, but instead of having the checklists on the outside and the Dutch door being something else, the Dutch door for these ones were my events and checklists for each day. In August I used what was essentially a combination of a vertical and a horizontal style, in the sense that I cut off both the side of the page and the top to make this one. This housed my meal log for the month, and although I didn't use it for the full month, I did quite like how it turned out. Because it had both the sides and the top shaved down, it meant that regardless of where I was, I could see the title for the page and also the rules and exceptions that I set myself for the whole 30 challenge. In October, I decided that all of my daily checkboxes were going to be housed on these vertical Dutch doors. So the full month of checklists were on Dutch doors, while there was a running to-do list for the month on either side of this, as well as the weather. As you'll remember from my One Month in My Journal series, I also did a Dutch door layout for November. The difference for this one compared to October was, instead of having all of the Dutch doors in one section as one long running month, I made these Dutch doors on weekly spreads instead. So we had an events and to-do list for the week, and then a Dutch door for each of the checklists for the days. Each of these Dutch doors also had a little tab, mostly for decoration, but also so that you could easily get to the day that you needed to be on. Last but not least, we have my current journal, where I've again gone for this folded Dutch door style. The main reason I decided to go with this one is so that I didn't have to write down the days of the month again. So I can see the days of the month regardless of which page I'm on, on this Dutch door. So as you saw, there are several different ways you can set up a Dutch door. So we have the folded style, and then we have the two different versions of the cut style where it's either a vertical or a horizontal cut. What I'm now going to take you through is how to set up each of those different Dutch door styles, and some of the things that you might want to consider while you're doing them. So starting with the easiest, that would be the folding style of making a Dutch door. And it's pretty much as straightforward as it sounds. You just take your page, and you fold it. 
For the most part, when I do a folded Dutch door, I like to try and make it a perfect half. So I take the edge of the page and fold it in as close to the center of the book as possible. Before you go in and put your crease down, make sure that the top and the bottom of the page are lined up quite straight to make sure that that line is as straight as possible. Once I fold it one way, I also like to go back and fold it the other way as well. You may also at this stage like to check, before you go and commit to anything, that it does sit flat in your book regardless of which way you have it. So flat this way, and also flat this way. If it doesn't sit flat, you can use this as an opportunity to straighten up your lines in a way that will allow it to sit flat before you go and put anything down in pen. With this folded style of Dutch door, you can either leave it open, so you have the opportunity to put information on all four sections, or you can stick one side to another, so that then you only put information on two sections. And you can either stick it this way, or you can fold it back the other way and stick it that way. If you are going to leave it unfolded, a suggestion I would have would be to put washi tape up the centre, just to kind of strengthen that fold. If you're folding and unfolding paper repeatedly, it does have a tendency to weaken the paper. You'll see here that I put the tape on one side and then have cut it and I'm going to go in and put the tape on another. You could technically just use one piece of continuous tape that goes all the way around, but often when I've tried to do this, I've ended up bringing it around to the next side and then ripping the paper. So to save myself the hassle of having to deal with ripped paper, I prefer to tape one side and then the other. Once you've done your taping, you then just go and trim the top and the bottom to neaten it up. Then once you're finished, you just need to go in and reset your creases. Depending on the thickness of your washi tape, your page may need quite a few times going over it to really fold that crease down properly. Doing this, you also will tend to get a slight ridge of bubbling in your washi tape. So if this is something that bothers you, it might be something to consider or try and avoid. Of course, instead you may choose that you don't want to have an open Dutch door and instead have one of those smaller folded and stuck down ones. So to do this, the first thing you need to decide is which way you want to stick it down. Typically, I tend to decide to stick mine this way, just because I like to not have an edge running down the center of my book from the front view. Once you've made that decision, you just need to either put some glue or double-sided tape in between these two pages, and then very securely stick them down. When you do this, do make sure that you try and stick this edge as close as possible to the center, just so that it doesn't curl up and make a mess of an otherwise very tidy spread. I find that the easiest way to do this is using double-sided tape and running that double-sided tape really, really close to the edge of this page. To make sure that your Dutch door doesn't bubble up, you should also put some kind of adhesive in the middle section as well. I'd also usually tend to put a line of double-sided tape at the top and bottom as well, but in the interest of not wasting my double-sided tape, I'm not going to do that for this video. When you go to stick your page onto the other side, you want to make sure that you try and eliminate any risk of bubbling by doing this process quite slowly and carefully. If you're like me and you prefer to have rounded edges on the corners here, you can also use a corner punch just to cut those off, or you can just go in with scissors.
Just as a note, if I was going to be doing this folded and stuck down style of Dutch door, I also wouldn't go in and washi tape the page first, just as this can add a fair bit of bulk to your journal. Doing this folded style of Dutch door too many times also can add bulk to your journal, because you're essentially doubling the thickness of this page while reducing the size of it by half. For this reason, people can prefer to instead go in with the other style of vertical where you actually cut the paper. And we're gonna have a look at that one now. So while the folding style of vertical Dutch doors was the easiest and safest to do in your journal, the next safest would be this style of vertical. Essentially all you have to do is decide how many columns of squares you want your page to come in from the side, and then cut that amount off the side of the page. There are some slight decorative variations you can do with this, which I'm going to show you guys as well. So let's say for instance on this Dutch door I wanted to come in 8 squares off the side of the page. Usually I like to go in with a pencil first, just to give myself some rough guidelines before I actually go in and cut anything out. Depending on how good you are with scissors, you can either use scissors to go up the side of the page, just following the dot grid if you have one, or if instead you need a line, you can rule this out first, or if you have a guillotine, you can use that instead. So the type of guillotine I have here is one of these flat style guillotines that can just fold up here, has these magnets to hold it in place, and you just slide your page through, snap it down, and cut. If you're instead trying to use a guillotine that has a leather style arm, you do need to make sure that it's wide enough to accommodate for the entire of your journal's page. Remember these offcuts are really handy to keep just in case you need to cover up a mistake at any stage. So you can see with the guillotine, I have gotten myself a nice, clean, sharp line. But not everybody has a guillotine, so of course scissors are totally a viable option as well. So we have one, two, three Dutch doors here. Of course, if you want to decorate the edge of these ones, you can go in with a washi tape and just stick it down half on one side and then fold it over to the other and stick it on the other. This can make your edges look a little bit more clean, especially if like me, with your scissors, you've kind of done a bit of a wobbly line rather than a really straight one. Something that I used on my November Dutch doors were mini tabs, and I'm going to show you how to go and cut these ones in now as well. I'm going to show you the style that I used in November, and also another style that you might want to try out. So I'm first going to go and cut this page in half, so I can have one style at the top and the other down the bottom. So for the first style of tab, all you really need to do is decide how much space you want on your Dutch door and then add on an additional column or two for that small sticking out tab. So let's just say for this Dutch door, we wanted the Dutch door to end here and then have the tab sticking out from there. What we need to do is decide how big we want that tab to actually be. In my November spread, the tab that I had was four squares down. So I had one square on either side that was slanted and two in the middle that was straight. Then my next tab on the page over would come out from that point where the tab had ended. So the next tab would come out from here, go down to, and then go back in. And then the tab after that would come out, go down, and then go back in. And the rest of the page would just go straight down. Of course, drawing all this out on the first page isn't really that helpful, because the only thing that we're going to be cutting into this one is that first tab there. So I need to draw this out on my next page and the page after to include this tab and this tab. Drawing it all out on one page, however, can be really helpful for you to plan out how you want it to look at the end, and then you just go and count the number of squares you need to put in between each of those tabs on the next pages. 
So for my second tab, this starts one, two, three, four, five, six squares down. Remember we want this line to be the same on each page, so we also need to count however many squares across as well. So one, two, three. And then we go out one, down two, and in one. For my third page, this starts one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten squares down and is three squares in. So one out, two down, one in, and then all the way down. Remember that there is absolutely no shame in drawing yourself guidelines. It is hugely helpful and it means that you don't end up stuffing up where you need to cut. Make sure to be really careful with cutting to the edge of this tab, because if you cut too far in you do weaken your tab overall. It can also be quite helpful for instead of trying to cut this all out in one piece, cutting off the excess as you go along. So you can already start to see how our tabs are starting to form. Also as I've done here, make sure to turn your book so that you can actually cut on an angle that is comfortable. Of course, if you prefer, you can just leave your tabs as kind of square shapes. I just personally like the idea of the slanted edges. Once you're finished, then make sure to go in and erase any of your pencil lines and you can colour in or washi tape your tabs. The biggest helper for this one is making sure that you plan in advance where you need to cut and take your time with it. There's nothing worse than planning out something that's going to look really nice and cute and then accidentally cutting somewhere where you're not supposed to and kind of ruining it. Also make sure to be careful while you're erasing because your little tabs are delicate. If you are colouring your tabs, remember we want things to be pretty from both sides, so make sure that you go onto the other side and colour them in there as well. So we have our three little tabs. Of course I've just coloured mine in for decoration, but you could label these depending on what this Dutch door was for. Before we cut these tabs out completely, you will have seen we kind of had that cascade of tabs going down the page. And that's what I want to show you how to create on this second one. Essentially what you want to be able to do is from the front see all of the tabs at once, but not have to cut them out all as small individual tabs. For this one, instead of having a slanted edge at both sides, I'm just going to have a slanted edge at the side that's going down, so the ending side. So let's just say for this one I want the full Dutch door to finish here as well, but that also includes part of the tab. So my tab here is going to take up two columns. I'm going to be cutting along this one, but not along that one, until you get to the end of that section there. And let's just say that again I want each of these tabs to take up four rows of boxes. 
with the tail coming down off that. So my first tab will sit here, my second tab will sit beneath that. So it will start here and go down one, two, three, four, and then come off that one. And then my last one will do something similar. It will start here and then come down one, two, three, four, and then slant off that one. For this last one, you can choose to slant it off or choose for it just to continue to the end of the page. And I think I'm going to go with that style today. So for this one, all pages are going to be cut down this line, but then this first one is also going to be cut down here and here to the end. The second one will be cut down here and here to the end. And the last one will just be a solid page with a solid border. Again, I've gone three in, and I want to go and put my guidelines on each of the pages that follow this one. So I'll start with the last one first, as this one's the simplest. That one's just three in, and a solid line the full way down. For my second page, it's straight up until this point here, and then cuts in. So three in, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then it cuts in and goes down. And for this one, I really want to make sure I cut it here and it goes down to there. So for this one, you can see we have that kind of cascade effect. So we have the first one, the second one, and the third. For this one, as you do have overlapping sections, you do want to try and make sure that all of these cuts do line up. As you can see, because I have a slightly imperfect lineup with my dots here, I do have this kind of bulging at the side here. And the easiest way to fix this is just to grab the pages together and very carefully trim them down. Emphasis on carefully though, if you slip and end up cutting somewhere you shouldn't, you ruin three pages at once. You can see that now these edges sit together a lot better. So we have tab number one, tab number two, and the last page here. And again, you can decorate this with washi tape or color or label these tabs if you needed to. So we have one, two, and three. And again, make sure that you go and erase your pencil lines so that you don't have this weird sketchiness around the outside. The last one we have is the horizontal Dutch door. And this is the one that's deemed as being the most dangerous to do in your bullet journal just as it does have the potential to kind of allow your pages to fall out if you do it incorrectly. What this one essentially involves is cutting from the edge of your page to the middle and then removing a section of the page at the top or bottom. The important thing to consider about this one is where the binding is in your journal, as the binding is what keeps your pages in your journal and stops them from falling out. The easiest way to find out where the binding is in your journal is to find a page in your journal that has the binding actually showing in the middle. So you have one continuous sheet making out the page, and then the binding shows in the middle of that page. So in the LT I can see that I have binding here, 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 and here. If you are cutting on one of these binding pages, you want to make sure that you first of all don't cut the binding and also have enough of the binding spots attached to your Dutch door to keep the Dutch door in your journal. Of course, there are remedies for when pages accidentally fall out of your journal, so you don't need to be too worried about it, but do just be mindful. For making your horizontal Dutch door, you just need to decide how big you want your Dutch door to be and then cut horizontally across and remove either the upper or lower section, depending on what you're looking for. For this one, I'm going to be doing a lower Dutch door. So a Dutch door on this lower section and removing the top of the page. 
And again, going in with pencil first can be quite helpful. So let's just say that I want to put my Dutch door here. And from where I was looking before, I can see that I have three sections of binding actually holding this page in, which means it will be quite secure. I'm going to be removing the top section of this, so I'm going to need to cut across here and then up. Sometimes it can be quite difficult to get scissors into this middle groove, so some people do prefer to instead rip the page out here. Again, you need to be mindful that this sheet of paper does continue to somewhere else in your journal, so you want to make sure that you don't accidentally ruin that page when trying to do this one. If your scissors are a little too big to get into the crease here, what you can do is hold one side of the paper down with your hand and very carefully tear it by pulling the page to the other side. This does mean it doesn't give you quite as crisp a line because it is torn paper, but usually it does work pretty well to stay in line with where you've already cut. Now what we need to do is remove this top section either by cutting it out with the scissors or just ripping it out in general. If you were a little bit worried about doing this, what you can do is cut it so that you leave a little bit of overhang and then just washi tape that down. So I'll show you what I mean by that now. Again, remember to turn your journal so it faces a way that cutting is comfortable. So instead of cutting directly into the crease, I'm going to go about one and a half of those squares out and cut along there instead. So I do have a little bit of a tongue sticking out here. And to hide that, I'm just going to go in, fold it to one side, and stick it all down with some washi tape. Which side you stick it to is completely up to you, but usually there is a way that the page naturally turns to, and it's easier to work with that rather than trying to go against it. Because the washi tape I'm using is quite thin, the crease of this extra little piece of paper does kind of show up. So if that's something that bothers you, it's something to consider. Of course, if you didn't want to have to deal with that little bit of extra overhang, you could instead go all the way to the crease and then cut or tear it all the way up. Remember, the more careful you are, the better it looks. Also, as you can see, I only washi taped one side here. Because I enjoy symmetry and balance, I'd probably also decide to go in and washi tape up this side as well. And then of course if you wanted to and had one, you could use a corner puncher to round this edge off, or you could just use some scissors. So for the styles we looked at, we had the folded vertical Dutch door, which you can either leave open or stuck down. We have the vertical Dutch door where you just cut from the edge of the page and you can make tabs that are either individual or cascading. And then we have the horizontal Dutch door. Thank you for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to give this one a big thumbs up. And in the comments below, let me know either how you like to use Dutch doors or how you now might be planning on using one. If you hadn't already and wanted to, jump over to my video on different Dutch door layout ideas to see some of the ways that you could use these ideas in your journal. I'll be back again on Thursday with another weekly plan with me. So until next time, bye!